Moving on to the next example for one-sided limits, we got the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus x minus 2 all over the absolute value of x minus 2. Now because we have this absolute value function here, we know that we're probably going to have to deal with a one-sided limit strategy. So the first step is let's create a piecewise function for just this absolute value expression on the side here. And we're going to do that by using this general result that we went over in the overview video. So the absolute value of x minus 2 when x minus 2 is less than 0, when it's negative, well, we have to change that to a positive, so we would just multiply that expression x minus 2 by a negative 1. And similarly, when x minus 2 is greater than 0, we would just keep it as is because it's already positive. And then simplifying this piecewise function more, keeping everything the same except these inequalities here, we would simplify to just have the x by itself. So x minus 2 is less than 0, that's the same thing as saying when x is less than 2. If we bring that negative 2 over, it changes signs. Similarly, if we bring this negative 2 over, it also changes signs. So this piece is when x is greater than 2. So now that we have a simplified piecewise function for the absolute value of x minus 2, let's incorporate that and create a piecewise function for this original expression that we were given in the limit. Now notice how the numerator, we can factor that into x minus 2 times x plus 1, and then we're still dividing by that absolute value of x minus 2 in the denominator. So now let's incorporate this piecewise function and create a piecewise function for this whole expression. So then the resulting piecewise function would be this here. So notice how we took this absolute value that we figured out over here and then created this negative x minus 2 when x is less than 2 and this positive x minus 2 when x is greater than 2 and the numerator we just kept the same. So then notice how these x minus 2's will cancel out. So for this piece we're just left with negative bracket x plus 1 when x is less than 2 and then these x minus 2's will cancel out here and we're just left with x plus 1 when x is greater than 2. And now we have a simplified piecewise function and we can graph this. And to help you graph this, maybe you want to create a table of values. So for this leg here, this negative x plus 1, you want to pick some x values of 2 and a couple that are less than 2. So I pick 2, 1, and 0. So if we plug these in to this leg here, 2 plus 1 is 3, and then this negative makes it a negative 3. And then similarly, if we plug in 1, we would get negative 2. If we plug in 0, we would end up getting negative 1. And then for this leg here, we can choose that x value of 2 and a few x values that are greater than 2. And then plugging those in into x plus 1, we would get uh, 3 here, here, 4, and 5. So then if we take this piecewise function and graph it, we can use the coordinates that we got. So this line here, negative bracket x plus 1, when x is less than 2, that's represented by this line here. And we can get that line by plotting these points. Also notice how there's a hole at this x value of 2 because it's not defined there. And then similarly, for x values that are greater than 2, we can graph this line, x plus 1. And that's represented here. And we can take those coordinates and plot them, and we would end up getting this line also notice how there's a hole at an x5 2 because it's not defined there. So now that we have the graph, let's find the one-sided limits of this limit here. So approaching to from the left side and from the right side. So if we approach it from the left side, this function f of x, which I labeled here, notice how we're going to approach this y value of negative 3. So this limit is equal to negative 3. Now what if we approach 2 from the positive side on this function f of x? Well, if we approach 2 from the positive side, notice we're approaching a y value of positive 3, which we can get in our table. So that's going to be positive 3 there. So because we're approaching different y values from both sides of 2, we know that the limit as x approaches 2 of the function that we were given does not exist. And it's clear to see with our graph. It's approaching two different y values as we approach two from both sides. So overall, not too bad of a question. Similar to the other examples that we did, the only tricky part was maybe that we have an 
uh, actual expression now for this simplified piecewise function. Before it was just negative one and positive one, so they were just horizontal lines. So whenever you get an actual expression for the simplified piecewise function, as we did, I erased it here, you want to make perhaps a table of values to help you see it better, and then just plot those coordinates, and then you'll get the, uh, the shape of the graph. The most important thing is to get the value, the y values, at these holes here. And if those y values are different, the limit's not going to exist. If they're the same, the limit is going to exist. We haven't done an example like that yet, but in the next video, we will. Yo, what's up, guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully, you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, a big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also, check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.